So the election is tomorrow. Finally. Uh, that's awesome. It will be a long 36 or so hours, I'm sure. Uh, as a reminder, tomorrow I'm going to do a live feed right around when some states are being called. So let's say around nine-ish, um, right when nerves are on edge. Uh, I'm going to probably have some friends that join us, um, uh, maybe some celebs. It depends on who's around, but I know a lot of people will be nervous. Um, there's a lot of people in the, the, the game that do analytics. I've been, you know, analyzing the numbers and, and whatnot for a long time. Um, I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, but at the same time, um, you know, as of right now, I'll, I'll just say this. You cannot win a presidential based off of PR. You can't. Uh, maybe it did a big difference in 2016, but Trump had an extensive ground game then. It wasn't like it is now. I'm not sure exactly if they had a massive ground game, but they definitely did not knock on three million doors on Saturday. And that is what the Harris campaign did. That was the number that I got. Um, in regards to our online organizing, which is one of the things we're known for, we work with Demcast USA, one of the best progressive organizations in the country. And we ran a get out the vote effort on Saturday and Sunday. Um, Saturday's hashtag generated over a billion, but so the B impressions. Uh, that was for the hashtag vote early for Kamala. Yesterday's hashtag on a Sunday, when football's in season, generate over half a billion impressions. So well done, everybody. I know a lot of people who are on this were involved in that. Um, and again, many thanks to Demcast USA. We'll be launching another effort today, um, which is still being decided because there's a lot going on. We want to make sure that we uh, have real focus on it. Um, so it may not be till this afternoon, but I'll make sure to send out a note when that goes live. Um Demcast and some others are also key partners in our new Press Watchdog Coalition, which launches on Wednesday, no matter what. Um, it includes independent journalists, activists, organizers. Think of it as our own sort of network of individuals that kind of form a, a, a power kind of concept of, of how we're going to push back as a collective uh, against main, uh, mainstream or whatever you want to call it, mainstream or corporate media uh, from here on out, because we all need to kind of join forces and we have a louder voice united than we do apart. So uh, a lot of these people, you'll know their names and you'll know exactly who they are. Um, a lot of our friends that go way back since they started, because um, remember, we've been in this game since 2016, ever since I saw some people wearing red hats in North Carolina and them taking uh, that orange monster seriously. And that scared me to death. Um, so then we had started the Democratic Coalition Against Trump, which was one of the first anti-Trump organizations. And um, from there, you know, we obviously ran that uh, as an investigations unit combined with uh, activism. And then my Twitter took off, which then we used for uh, over the years, maybe over 600 hashtags um, campaigns that have uh, worked out pretty well for us so yeah 1.5 billion impressions this weekend that means uh there were over 3 billion eyeballs that were on it now some of those were the same so that's why the uh, number is so high uh in individuals it's over 50 million people uh over half of those were in america itself um that's as much as we can parse down the numbers with that um, today, uh, we did a post in regards to Big Lie Part 2 and how we can prevent that on election night. So that's going to be, while we're doing a live video and outside of that, we're going to be trying to prevent people uh, in the press spreading this and saying, so one of the problems we have is they'll do a headline that says, Trump claims victory, right? And did he win, question mark? And like... Things like that, that spreads the big lie. Instead of the headline should read something along the lines of all votes have not been counted yet, no determined winner. Like something along those lines. You cannot repeat his lie. He'll just say that they're lying and he did win. Like it's just a back and forth. Um, condemning him is much different than running headlines that are questionable clickbait. We got to avoid that. When we see that, 
we're going to be calling that out at a massive level that we, we really, really haven't approached before um, in a coordinated way. So you'll you'll see that we're, we're ready for it. Um, we expect him to claim victory around 9 p.m. or so. We're still trying to find out a specific time, uh, but that seems seems likely around then. I think he did in the middle of the night in 2020. It's such a blur. feels like 50 years ago. Um, so, yeah, like I said, we're going to be launching another hashtag uh, today. I'll be talking to Project 2025 expert Andra Watkins at 3 p.m. Eastern today. That'll be another live chat. Every live video that we do, we will do a post on. So, um, y'all, if you miss it, then you can always catch it later. It'll also be in YouTube. Um, so we have a massive update on the Harris campaign today. And I just want to go over again how you can see, like, Trump doing a couple events here and there. This is what Harris and campaign and the surrogates are up to today. I'm going to try and get through this as much as quickly as possible, then we'll get to some questions. Uh, Harris is starting the day at a canvas kickoff in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, and then going to a rally in Allentown. Uh, she'll go to other rallies and concerts throughout the day in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Um, and that's the final kind of get out the vote uh, organizing effort ahead of Election Day. Tim and Gwen Walls will do a meet and greet in Minnesota. Um, that is not obviously as much campaigning because they're not worried about Minnesota. Uh, the Harris campaign is going to win that there like handily. Um, then they'll be headed to Wisconsin in the cross Stevens Point and uh, Milwaukee. Um, in Milwaukee, they'll be joined by Eric Benet as part of the final, again, get out the vote organizing effort. Um, then the uh, governor and Miss Walls will deliver remarks in Detroit with musical performances from the Detroit Youth Choir, which would be awesome, the War and Treaty, and the one and only John Bon Jovi. So that would be cool. Um, Doug Emhoff will deliver remarks at a canvas launch in Greenville, North Carolina. That's where East Carolina University is uh, before heading to Pennsylvania, joining VP Harrison rallies in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. And tomorrow, the vice president will be back in D.C., um, probably doing digital things, reminding people to stay in line if you're in line. Um, so let's go state by state to break it down. Uh, my good friend, Sophia Bush, she's an actress and producer. Uh, she is in Arizona today with Senator Mark Kelly, Gabby Giffords, and uh, former Ambassador Susan Rice. Um they're going to be doing a Fighting for Reproductive Freedom bus tour, and so that'll be pretty cool. And then they have an election eve concert with La Original Banda El Limon uh, in Phoenix. So that'll be that's going to be fun. Warnock is in making for Get Out the Vote press conference and canvas launch in Georgia. Two change two two, two chains. Joy of Jesse, Joy, uh, Keisha Cole, KP the Great, Morehouse. <laughs> It's the Morehouse House of Funk marching band. Pastor Troy and Tamar Braxton are in Atlanta for an, an election eve concert and rally there. So that'd be cool. In Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer is out there on her bus tour still uh, kicking butt. Former Republican Congressman Fred Upton who is going to be with Debbie Stabenow and Hillary Shulton. Um, and they have a bunch of different elected leaders who will be out there as well. And they are doing a big press conference in Flint on top of that. Uh, Leslie Adam Jr. is going to fire up volunteers in Lansing and Grand Rapids. In Nevada, I'm not done yet. That, I mean, this is a lot of stuff. Christina Aguilera uh, with Los Tigres del Norte and Sophie Tucker in Las Vegas for a concert and rally. And Dulé Hill and Rosario da Dawson are going to be doing canvas launches across Las Vegas as well. In North Carolina, First Lady Jill Biden will be in Carborough. Uh, launching canvas launches and also Winston Salem and Durham, uh, Sugarland, Remy Wolf, and James Taylor will doing a concert. They'll be doing a concert in Raleigh today. Uh, Roy Cooper is going to be doing canvas launches. He's the governor of North Carolina in Raleigh, Fayetteville, and Durham. And in Pennsylvania, we have Governor Josh Shapiro with Robert De Niro and Sam Waterston in Harrisburg uh, for a new way forward, is what they're calling it get out the vote launch, and then they'll also be doing something in Erie, Pennsylvania. In Wisconsin, we have a ton of different elected leaders. One of my favorite comedians, Paul Shear, he's going to be doing a canvas launch in Madison. Um, and then we have, you know, the one of the best party chairs, Ben Wickler. He's all over the state and kicking butt as well. As I said before, you know, for 
uh, Wednesday, we're going to be launching our Press Watchdog Coalition, but we're going to be active tomorrow uh, and today. And so we, we've worked together. We're just kind of um, uh, as a group, but we're, we're kind of naming it now and letting people know who the trusted news sources are, how we're going to be working together, what our major messaging campaigns are. Um, and one of the first things that we'll announce is that we're bringing truth back to journalism and ending the whole potential of lies and politics um, and holding new count to that. So no more debates where you have rules about, oh, I don't want to be fact checked. No, there should be live fact checks immediately. There should be warning labels before things are played on air. You should never play something live where you know that the person is going to be a pathological liar. And just, you know, at this point, we're going to have to focus on different Trumps eventually, because obviously they still have control of the party. But this may be the ending of Donald Trump. And I think as I've talked to different people who are undecided voters, that has helped make their decision. And so it's been nice to talk to people across the country, especially in swing states, um, about that. And so uh, we'll be as a reminder, we'll be doing a live video on election night. I'll be doing a 3 p.m. chat about the warning uh, behind Project 2025, just as a reminder with Andre Watkins. And uh, be sure to like and restack this post, spread the word, become a paid subscriber so you can support our efforts. Um, as you all know, I hate saying that, but I have to say it all the time because we have such a big effort running. Um, let's go to some questions if we have any. Absolutely, Jenny. Yeah, live fact checks are necessary due to his influence. And, you know, saying one of the biggest problems that we've had in the past is just you have a, a lie that, that's been told by Trump and then they'll say Trump says blah and it's the lie. And so then people assume that that's the truth instead of them saying Trump lies about this subject and then in the body they explain away from there. Um Michael, I, I I think this would be the end of Donald Trump in regards to running for office. I think he's going to be annoying little pest that's running around everywhere acting like he had either won the election or he's going to run again in four years or something like that if he were to lose tomorrow night, which um, if we do the work and we keep on following through with everything, I do believe he will lose. Um, let me see. Yeah, John, um, I lived in D.C. for like a long time and uh, fencing and barriers around Capitol and White House. Good. Um, you know, making sure that everything is protected as possible. There's not going to be another January 6th, especially with Biden as president. Nobody's getting in that building that that shouldn't be in there. Um, uh, of course, we'll have to prevent another big lie from spreading. And it starts with tomorrow night uh, in regards to that. Um, let me see. All right. I think we're going to wrap up there. Uh, Jennifer asked a question about, isn't there a major tech company in Arizona that gets hit hard if they get rid of the Chips and Science Act? Yes. Arizona will be hit the hardest out of any state by far. Um, I, I don't want to go over the wrong number here, but I think they're like a, a majority of states that will, will be hurt as in like um, of all the jobs, most of the jobs will, will be from Arizona where they would be lost directly in every swing state. It would get rid of thousands of jobs. Um, it is a, it is just ridiculous to take something away just because the other party did it. Um, it's retaliatory and it's nonsense, just like a lot of things that they do overall. Like it doesn't make sense to just blatantly attack people because they're on the other side of the aisle. I used to be able to have, you know, dinner conversations or just at least meet with people on the other side of the aisle to talk about, okay, like I understand you have to talk a certain way or do certain things, but like, how can we make this go through I know you're afraid of getting reelected or whatever, but how can we come up with a deal so that it works for everybody and we get this through? Now I can't even do that. 
you know, they, they they'll come out and it's all a game where they want to uh, pull out their cell phone and videotape you and try and catch you off guard doing something. And I, I've been in the game too long for those kind of gimmicks to work on me, but um, they've tried many times. And I remember one time it was like oh, eight years ago, seven years ago, one of Trump's staffers saw me uh, dancing with a girlfriend at the time and at some friends and we're, I'm just dancing. I'm not a good dancer, but you know, I think I have some moves after two beers. And so I'm dancing and whatnot. And the guy just comes up to my face with the cell phone. And all you can do is ignore it. But also if they come within a boundary where we were, um, you know, they, that is actually illegal at some point. So uh, what I do in those instances, I just walk away. Let's walk away. It's, it stinks to have to leave somewhere or go somewhere different um, because of people like that. But um, that's just how it works. Um, they want to try and get you and whatnot. Um, let me see if there's anything else I should go over. I think that's it for now. But we'll talk at um, we'll talk at three p.m and go over that and uh with project 2025 and some of the warnings there so thanks so much for watching let's finish strong one day to go i'm excited um and so let's uh be sure to like and restack this post when we get this up in an hour or two and check us out at 3 p.m where i'll be on with andre watkins i appreciate y'all watching i hope you enjoyed and uh let's again fight through the finish let's sprint through it and uh the more we do today the less we have to worry about tomorrow. Um, so let's keep on pushing and we'll have uh, some strategic discussions about what we're going to be doing tomorrow for election protection and warnings and making sure we put a spotlight on any issues that are happening across country and just make sure that, you know, before you share anything on social media that you verify the source and that we're not spreading any kind of false narrative. If there's, like, look at this line. They're preventing these people. Sometimes those videos are from four years ago. Um, so just be careful about the information you consume. Uh, tomorrow, especially, it's going to be on high alert for misinformation, disinformation, and uh, intentionally trying to deceive us. Um, so anyways, I will talk to you all soon. Thanks so much for joining us. Onward.